Are you a goal getter or just a goal setter? Always setting goals but never seeing them through. Another year rolls by and then you're still not gotten anywhere. If you want to take things to the next level and actually see tangible progress in your accomplishments, then stick around for what I'm about to share. Hi guys, it's Antoinette and welcome to another video. Now, if you're new in this community, welcome. And if you like the content, then consider subscribing so you can get more of this kind of stuff. Now, getting straight into the video, most of us tend to be optimistic about a new year because it signifies a chance to start start all over again, you know, like a new leaf, everything brand new. All of which is good, it's like a good mindset to have, but the problem is when you begin to set goals for yourself and then you don't follow it through, you're kind of left worse off and it's like you're breaking a commitment to yourself. And all of this doesn't instill much confidence in us because we think, oh, we don't have the ability to get things done. And then we put it off and don't try and figure out what went wrong. Just carry on living life in limbo, so to say, accepting whatever comes. But I'm here to tell you that things don't have to be like this. Coming from someone who's been on both sides of the spectrum, when you get the strategy right, things begin to happen for you and you don't have to stay frustrated. This is not a sleazy sales pitch. So how do you stop living year in, year out with little to no impact being made in your life or those around you? Step one, you need an effective system in place to make sure your goals are working. This system minimizes the chance of you not committing to completing the necessary tasks that you have in order to make your goals a reality. Now I was going through my old diary from the 90s and just looking back on some of the goals and resolutions I had written back there, please note I no longer do resolutions, I just smart target or some people like to call it smart goal setting. Anyway looking back at it I was laughing because there was no way I would have accomplished any of those goals or resolutions, no way. Why? Because you've guessed it. I didn't have a system in place that were gonna make those goals and resolutions a functioning reality for me. And another critical thing that I noticed that was very apparent to me was back then I didn't know the difference between a goal and my vision. Because I didn't know that the two were very different and I was muddling everything together, plonking it down, I'm just believing for the best and then got frustrated when nothing happened even after prayer. When we don't know something, Oh gosh, I, I'm just, I'm looking back at the ignorance really and it's just letting me appreciate the growth that I've seen over the years. So the first point that I want you to know is that goals are not like visions and dreams. Your visions and dreams can be out of this world, extravagant, larger than life, and so they should be because they're God-given and God is not going to give you a small vision for your life. It's gonna be something that will expand you, something that will stretch you, something that is way beyond what you think you can accomplish. But your goals, on the other hand, are more likely to be something a lot smaller and with a proper system in place attainable you should be able to attain this within a specific time and like i mentioned before that's why i now smart goal set or smart target which means it's specific it's measurable it's attainable it is relevant and timely so that is what differentiates your goal or goals from the bigger picture, your vision or your dreams. See your goals as like the building blocks to your bigger vision and purpose being accomplished. And for me personally, I've said this year that if my goals are in no way serving the bigger picture or in no way serving that purpose, then really it's a waste of my time. I just want to point out here that you don't have to pull yourself down. If you don't have a vision for your life, you don't know what your vision is, this will come with time. When you're ready to handle it, God will eventually reveal it to you. But not knowing your vision doesn't mean you can't start working on the smaller goals and developing good, smart goal habits, targeting right now where you are with what you've got, with what you've got going on. You can set little goals with everything happening in your life. Just take advantage of the fact that you're building yourself up, you're working yourself up so that when the bigger picture is revealed or you have that larger vision in mind, you know what to do. And you know, sometimes we need to just stop chasing the big when we haven't even mastered the the small everyday things that will eventually make the greatest impacts in our lives. Most of the things in life start off small and then gradually increase and gradually build on it. Like I was talking about before, growth. You look back over the years and you see how far you've come. And I think that's how life is, the process in life. So don't beat yourself up. Don't be like, oh, well, I don't have a vision. I don't 
calling on my dream all of that it will eventually be revealed to you there's everybody's got a vision and dream for their life inside of you it will come out at the right time this is what i believe anyway so i know that was a huge detour back to what i was saying when i changed the way in which i set my goals and how I organized my life, then the will was set in the right direction for things to be moving and getting to where I need to go. Basically, start off where you are. You don't have to wait until a new year to start setting goals. And that's partly why I've scrapped the whole New Year's resolution thing. I'm just gonna wait until a new year before I start doing this. No, when I'm ready, when I feel that I'm ready to achieve an attainable goal, regardless of what time of the year it is, then I'm gonna start. This could be in July, it could be in August, it doesn't matter. Every day is an opportunity for you to make change in your life. Now, the next step for you to do is write it down and zoom in. A lot of people don't like to put the effort in because they're like, I don't wanna do this, I don't see the point. These things don't work anyway. It probably didn't work for you because you were doing it all wrong. You were doing it with the wrong mindset, all of that. But when, once you know what to do and you do the right thing, you start to see results. I can't stress this enough. And I'm saying this because I used to think like that, that these things don't work. I used to be so pessimistic about everything. But once I knew what to do and how to do it properly, and I began to see results, I was just like, okay, the problem really was with me. So there's no way around this. You're going to have to roll up your sleeves and actually do the work. Now you can start off by writing a whole bunch of ideas or things that come to your mind um, on a piece of paper or whatever, but you need to eventually narrow it down and be very specific in which ones are your priority. A lot of people say that you should have around 10 goals in a year, but for me, and I'm talking about myself personally, personally, I've got to the stage where I'm not putting unnecessary pressure on myself. So I have no more than about two to three main goals, no more than this in the year. And I just zero in on one specific main goal. That's the goal that's getting the most vim basically. And I know a lot of people don't work like that, but I found that this kind of quadruples the likelihood of me actually accomplishing that goal. And then I can move on to other goals once I'm on a roll with that, as opposed to juggling a number of different goals at the same time and just minimizing the effectiveness of it or the effectiveness of me getting it done. Now, once you've figured out what your one main thing is, pressing on it and let that thing constantly be on your mind. I'm going to talk more about this in um, the video on visualization and stuff like that, but you need to have this in your forefront. Now, the next thing is, are you asking the right questions? Now, once you've written it down, you've zeroed it in, remember the SMART acronym that I was talking about earlier, then you need to start asking yourself the right questions as to whether you are going to actually get this goal accomplished. So you're just working out if this is actually gonna work for you. So for example, you just saying, I want to be healthier. It's not a specific enough goal, it's too generic. There are a number of ways of becoming healthier. So you need to specify how healthy for you is gonna look like and how it's going to work. You need to write something along the lines of, okay, going to the gym three times a week for an hour each session. But you also need to take into consideration the fact that, okay, are you now gonna be waking up earlier to go to the gym? Or where else in your schedule can you fit gym time? If the mornings can't work for you, is it gonna be the evenings? If it's the evenings, if you have children, who's gonna look after your children? Those are the questions that you need to start asking. How much is your gym, gym membership gonna cost? Do you have that extra funds, especially if you're on a budget now? Start asking those questions, those necessary practical questions, because if you don't ask it, then how is this goal going to be accomplished? You haven't covered all bases. Another example is you might not be living with your child and you wanna see that child more often, write down how you think this is gonna work for you. Are you going to be leaving work earlier, an hour earlier? Is your manager gonna be cool with this? Or are you gonna to have to free up your weekends? And you also need to bear in mind the child's other parent. Are they gonna be cool with your new arrangements? Or even in seeing your child a lot more, does it fit into their schedule? So we have these outlandish goals, but we don't necessarily always consider all the possible external factors that might be out of our control that needs to be accounted for in order to see this goal to reality. 
so it's almost like you need to have like a thinking process think through the whole thing from the start to the finish being be honest with yourself and if you know that you can't see this thing working in your writing stage then it means that you're not ready yet so maybe it's time for you to leave that to the side so the bottom line is think of the logistics in how your new goal is going to work for you if it's not going to work move on to the next and for me an example that i can give you is in 2019 last year i wanted to cut down my sugar intake by half i didn't cut cut sugar out totally because I knew that was a myth I knew that wasn't going to happen I've got a sweet tooth so realistically me going cold turkey so I did pace myself and I made a goal that was more attainable for me I'm done with setting up goals and failing and feeling like crap afterwards because I set a goal for myself that wasn't going to happen anyway what did I do? So for me to cut down my sugar intake by half, I needed to measure how much sugar I was already taking in because I really didn't know. So for the whole month, literally a whole month, I had to record everything. I went ham in measuring my sugar intake or if I didn't know I kind of estimated it so that I could be more specific now this allowed me to know exactly where I needed to make necessary changes moving on to working it out if you've ticked all the boxes then you need to start planning or scheduling that activity or project into your everyday life as I've mentioned before in last week's video when you put it in your calendar then it becomes real to you and you're subconsciously setting yourself up for it to work now going back to my cutting down my sugar intake example I knew the biggest change I needed to make was in my shopping habits and to limit the room that I had to making excessive sugary purchases so I started to do a lot more online shopping I used honey instead of sugar all of that kind of stuff there was just different things like that that I had to map out for me to see the results and you see the beauty of this is when what you're doing becomes a habit it's really hard for you to break so last December I just wanted to while out because I thought to myself you know what I've been good for the whole year I've measured my sugar intake and I've literally cut it down by half so I decided okay go and buy myself a whole galaxy bar of chocolate like the big massive ones and you know what happened I couldn't eat no more than two strips it's like after the second strip I was I felt like an overload of sugar and it was making me feel so sick that I just abandoned the whole thing it's probably still sat in my fridge right now but my point is I had got into so much of a habit of not having that much sugar that when I did kind of like infuse a lot in at the same time my body was like no 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 so it's a good thing just you just need to get into the habit you need to get into the routine of things and once you get into the habit and the routine of things your goal is going to be accomplished it's the little everyday things that you do bit by bit that matter the most it's what builds up the bigger picture it mo it's what makes you more successful later on in life finally Finally, the next step is accountability um, I'm very big on this if you've been following me for a while you know I feel that having an accountability partner in whatever it is drastically helps you it doesn't have to be as daunting as it sounds especially if you're the sort of person that likes to keep to yourself or your introvert whatever I'm the same but having that accountability partner someone to help you keep on track and stay committed to your goal is key especially if you've got the tendency of slacking off I was speaking to my uncle over Christmas and he was saying how he goes to the gym three times a week and we were asking him like how do you stay so committed and he was like you know what it's really down to my gym body who helps me out a lot of the time like on the days that he doesn't feel like going his body's like fam we can't be slacking like this we need to get this body into shape and when he leaves the gym he feels so much better so consider letting in someone on what you're doing it's obviously someone that you can trust someone that can help you and just be a support for you in the times that you need it or someone to kick your backside up when you need it as well basically your goal needs to be super important to you for you to want to change your reason has to be big enough of a motivation otherwise you're probably just not going to make the move let's be honest and honesty for us being honest with ourselves is so key if you're not ready you're not ready most of the time big changes are only ever made when we have no choice but to so don't come down too hard on yourself if you don't have the urge to change even if you know you should I mentioned this in my last videos where creatures have habit we don't like to change especially if our current setup is comfortable and working for us basically it's not a detriment to our being and at the moment 
moment, a lot of my major changes have been circumstantial. I didn't like where I was and I knew things were only gonna get worse if I had stayed the same. My sugar reduction goal came about when I was experiencing period pains, cramping, heavy bleeding at the time of the month, random breakouts on my skin, all of that, and I tried everything else. So I had no choice but to reduce my sugar based on the doctor's orders. So for me now, my aim is to get to the stage where I willingly change on my own accord without being forced into changing. Lord, help us all. Now I wanna hear from you guys. What goals and aspirations do you have this year? And are you at that thinking stage, that writing down stage where you're like, okay, is this gonna work? Let me know, let's have this conversation. Let's engage together, if not here on my Instagram platform. And remember that it's one step at a time to becoming confident. Bye for now, guys.